After more than 10 years of slow development, repeated delays, and changing plans, the Dream Chaser space plane has finally passed the last major ground test needed before its first spaceflight. Sierra Space confirmed that the spacecraft has now completed electromagnetic tests, high-speed runway towing, communication checks, and full landing recovery rehearsals. These tests were the final step to proving that Dream Chaser is ready for real space conditions. At Kennedy Space Center, engineers place Dream Chaser inside a special test facility to check how all of its electronic systems behave when exposed to different electromagnetic signals. Every spacecraft generates its own electrical noise, and if that noise interferes with navigation or communication systems, the mission can fail instantly. During the tests, Dream Chaser successfully showed that all of its computers and control systems can operate at the same time without interfering with each other. This is critical because in orbit, there is no room for system conflicts. Another major test involved pulling Dream Chaser across a runway at high speed using a heavy truck. This was done to simulate the exact forces the spacecraft will experience when it lands after returning from orbit. The landing gear, brakes, steering system, and automatic control systems were all tested together in real conditions. The spacecraft stayed stable while braking and steering, and the landing gear handled the motion exactly as planned. This proved that Dream Chaser can safely touch down like an airplane after re-entering Earth's atmosphere. With these tests now complete, Dream Chaser is expected to undergo its final acoustic test, which simulates the intense vibration and noise it will experience during launch. If that test goes as planned, the spacecraft will be cleared for its first mission in 2026. It will launch on a Vulcan Centaur rocket and land on a runway at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Dream Chaser is very different from the spacecraft that currently fly to space. Most modern spacecraft are capsules. SpaceX's Crew Dragon and Boeing's Starliner are both round capsules that return to Earth using heat shields and parachutes. They usually land in the ocean. After landing, recovery ships are required to lift them out of the water and bring them back to shore. Saltwater exposure also causes wear on the vehicles and increases refurbishment work. Dream Chaser does not use parachutes or ocean landings. It launches vertically like a rocket, but it returns horizontally and lands on a runway like an aircraft. No pilot is needed. The entire descent and landing are computer controlled. Because it lands on a runway, Dream Chaser can return cargo much more gently than capsule vehicles. This is especially important for delicate science experiments that need stable conditions during re-entry. It also allows faster access to cargo because the spacecraft can be rolled into a hangar immediately after landing instead of being lifted from the ocean. The current version of Dream Chaser is designed for cargo missions. It can carry up to 5,000 kilograms of pressurized cargo inside its main body. It also carries an attached cargo module called Shooting Star, which holds additional unpressurized cargo and provides power for the mission. When Dream Chaser returns to Earth, the Shooting Star module separates and burns up in the atmosphere, while the main space plane survives and lands for reuse. Dream Chaser is built using a lifting body design. That means its shape itself creates lift during re-entry, rather than relying on large wings. This design traces back to NASA research from the 1960s and 1970s, when engineers tested lifting body aircraft to understand how spacecraft could glide safely through the atmosphere. These studies later influenced the space shuttle and other experimental vehicles. In the 1990s, NASA designed a small spaceplane concept called the HL-20. That design became the foundation for what is now Dream Chaser. Sierra Nevada Corporation later took ownership of the project and began developing it as a real orbital vehicle using modern materials and flight software. Today, the program is run by Sierra Space a separate space-focused company formed from the original parent organization. Originally, Dream Chaser was meant to carry astronauts. When NASA launched the commercial crew program after the space shuttle was retired, three main companies competed to build new American crew spacecraft. SpaceX offered its Crew Dragon capsule. Boeing offered its Starliner capsule. Sierra Space offered Dream Chaser as a reusable space plane that could land on runways. 
At the time, many believed Dream Chaser would be a strong competitor, but the program moved more slowly than expected. While SpaceX pushed Dragon forward at a rapid pace, Dream Chaser struggled with funding changes, redesigns, and delays. Eventually, NASA selected SpaceX and Boeing for crew transport. Dream Chaser was moved into a cargo-only role under NASA's cargo resupply contracts. SpaceX advanced quickly. Dragon flew its first uncrewed test mission to the International Space Station in 2019. In 2020, it began carrying astronauts. Since then, SpaceX has flown dozens of missions with crew, private passengers, and cargo. Dragon now has a strong safety record and is the main way NASA transports astronauts to space. Boeing's experience turned into the exact opposite of what NASA had hoped for. When NASA awarded contracts under the commercial crew program, Boeing actually received more money than SpaceX because NASA trusted Boeing's long history with Apollo, the Space Shuttle, and the International Space Station. Boeing was seen as the safest choice. But despite the large funding, Starliner quickly fell behind. In 2019, Starliner's first uncrewed test flight failed after a basic software timing error caused the spacecraft to burn too much fuel. Because of this mistake, it could not reach the International Space Station and was forced to return early. Later, NASA found a second serious software fault that could have caused a collision during capsule separation, which might have destroyed the vehicle if left undetected. These errors exposed major testing and quality control failures inside Boeing. After this, Boeing had to repeat the uncrewed test at its own cost. The second uncrewed mission in 2022 finally docked with the ISS, but it still suffered from thruster failures and propulsion system problems. Several maneuvering thrusters shut down in orbit, and engineers traced the issue to faulty valves and moisture-related corrosion in the propulsion system. This caused yet another long delay. In 2024, Starliner finally flew its first crewed test mission with two astronauts. The capsule reached the ISS successfully, but soon after docking, helium leaks and additional thruster failures were detected in the propulsion system. These problems made it unsafe for Starliner to perform the return burn needed to bring the astronauts home. NASA then made a critical decision. The astronauts were left aboard the space station for months, and Starliner returned to Earth without crew because it could not be trusted for a safe human re-entry. The astronauts were later scheduled to return aboard SpaceX's Crew Dragon instead. After this incident, NASA canceled Starliner's upcoming crewed missions indefinitely and placed the program under extended review. By this point, SpaceX had already completed many successful crew flights at lower cost and with far fewer problems. Boeing, despite receiving the larger share of funding, had delivered repeated delays, failures, and safety concerns. Unlike SpaceX and Boeing, Dream Chaser is not trying to replace crew capsules right now. Its main purpose is cargo transport. It will deliver supplies to orbit and bring experiments back to Earth with a runway landing. This makes it useful for scientific research, biotechnology, and medical studies that depend on controlled handling during return. Dream Chaser is also fully reusable. After landing, it can be inspected, refueled, and prepared for another mission. Over time, this could lower the cost per flight if refurbishment turns out to be easier than capsule recovery and rebuilding. Sierra Space believes the space plane can fly many missions over its lifetime instead of being used once or twice. Its first mission will be a demonstration flight. It will not dock with the International Space Station during this initial flight, even though earlier plans said it would. Instead, the mission will focus on orbital flight and runway landing. Once that flight is successful, future missions will fully support NASA cargo deliveries. This first orbital attempt will be the most important moment in Dream Chaser's history. Until it flies, everything remains theoretical. Heat protection during re-entry and real-world system performance can only be proven once the spacecraft makes the full round trip from Earth to orbit and back. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.